Hello, this is Daniel Mart, and today I'm going to be doing another review. This one's going to be for the first season of Fear the Walking Dead. So yeah, I know this show, the, the, I know the first season of Fear the Walking Dead ended all the way back in like October. Um, thing is that Fear the Walking Dead ended and then the week right after The Walking Dead started. So I, re I really didn't have time to kind of review it, basically, because you know, you had school, I have school in the middle, m m middle. So yeah, and so yeah, you know, why not review it right now when there's kind of a break from The Walking Dead and from all these other shows? Why not do a couple of TV show reviews? I've been I'm, I've been doing a bunch of movie reviews if you haven't noticed. So why not a few TV show reviews? So yeah, this is gonna be for the first season of Fear the Walking Dead. Um, if you haven't watched the season, it's six episodes. Um, it's six episodes. It's pilot. Um, yeah, it's pilot. So close yet so far. The dog. Um, not fade away. Cobalt and the Good Man. So those are the names of the six episodes. So yeah, if you haven't watched any of these episodes or if you haven't caught up to the show, um, you know, don't watch this because I will be spoiling stuff. So yeah, uh, so yeah, as usual, ten second spoil warning. As usual, for those who have yet to actually watch the season and haven't already, um, stop the video, go check it out, and come back here and watch the rest of this review. Ten second spoiler warning. As usual, starting now. Okay, so 10 seconds are up, so for those who have yet to actually watch this season and haven't already, um, please don't comment down below or be messaging me, then I gave you a fair warning, as usual, I did. So yeah, just to go over it um, one more time, the season consists of six episodes, and again, pilot, so close yet so far, the dog, not fade away, Cobalt, and the good man. And yeah, before I forget, the this series stars Kim Dickens, Cliff Curtis, Frank Delane, um, Alicia Debnon Carey, Elizabeth Rodriguez, Mercedes Mason, Lorenzo James Henry, um, Ruben Blades, Coleman Domingo, and Patricia Rice Spindola. So, yeah, and San, San, Sandrine Holt. So, yeah, those are the ones worth mentioning. Um, there's a few other ones. Uh, so, yeah, Lincoln A. Castellanos is there, Scott Lawrence, Maestro Harold, and Sean Hotosi. Hot so, yeah, those are the, the, all the main and current cast, whatever. Um, so, yeah, basically, this is the start of the zombie apocalypse. It's, it's set in the same universe as The Walking Dead, but this one's set in L.A., California. Uh, basically, the series follows this family. It's kind of dysfunctional. Um, you have Cliff Curtis. He's, like, he's the dad. Um, he's the dad. Travis, Kim Dickens is the mom. Madison and those two live with Alicia Debnon Carey, which is Alicia, which is Alicia, which is Madison's um, daughter, and basically they're trying to live life as normal as possible. Um, they have their own family issues. Um, Cl um, Travis, he doesn't really have a good relationship with his son, played by Lorenzo, Lorenzo Henry. Um, he doesn't have a really good relationship with his ex-wife. Um, so he's kind of struggling there. Um, the son. And, um, Nick, he's a drug dealer, basically, so that's go that that goes on. And it's basically them and trying to survive the outbreak of the zombie apocalypse. Um, so, yeah, they eventually all, you know, you, you have, they go into downtown L.A. They meet the Salazar family, which is which has Daniel Salazar, Griselda Salazar, and Ophelia Salazar. Um, and, yeah, you learn out that these Salazars, the, the two parents, um, they're from Honduras, I believe, and you know, they had to tr go through the Civil War in Honduras. They tra they traveled to America, and now they're trying to be a pretty normal family in America, and you know more than dysfunctionality. Um, eventually, um, uh, this whole group eventually um ends up in this cul-de-sac where they where Travis and Madison live. Um, I believe. I believe um, it's, it's, it's an actual place in there. I, I forget what they said. I believe it's like Serrano's or whatever. Um, but I'm not really sure uh, what, what's, what, I wouldn't say village, but what area they, they live in. I believe they said Serrano's or something like that. It's the, it's the oldest section in L.A. So, yeah. Uh, so, go off that. 
So yeah, it's basically them trying to survive the zombie apocalypse. I mean, that's basically it's the start of the zombie apocalypse. Nick, he's a drug dealer, so he's just trying to get he gets into trouble. And he's the most controversial character. Some people really like him, some people really hate him. So yeah. And due to the fact that he has this drug dealer mentality and just the way he behaves, um, he gets captured by the military and he's sent over to like this military base where they test out if you're you know if you're gonna if you're infected or not. Um eventually Daniel just goes to shit in this in the last episode he brings everybody he's like yo we're gonna get the fuck out of here um we're gonna get the fuck out of here you know survive because this military bullshit is gonna fucking kill us eventually and plus my wife's probably already dead because while they're escaping downtown la um this scaffold kind of just comes comes on and crushes um his wife's foot so she was pretty she was dead from the beginning so yeah and they do say that and she, they, they do show that she's dead and yeah, and on the way, they meet this guy who's, like, who's, they meet Coleman Domingo, who's, uh, Victor Strand in this show. He's this really sophisticated, um, he's really sophisticated, he's, like, really rich, which is something we haven't really seen in The Walking Dead. We haven't really seen someone who had money, who had power right before the apocalypse, and now that kind of, I mean, the closest thing we had with that was Di Diane or Diane or whatever, because she was a politician. Here we got we had this really rich guy, uh, and he's kind of shady to begin with. I mean, he's he, he he's not exactly a good guy. He's more like an anti-hero, I want to say, because he he has this because he's with he gets stuck with Nick and one of their neighbors, um, because you know one one of the the neighbors from this community that they were in that Nick was in, and he's crying, you know, misses his wife, and Coleman Domingo is like, you know. Someone's probably already fucking your wife, fucking your children. And this guy just, you know, he just goes to hand on this guy. The neighbor starts crying, bawling. And the military takes him away. He's like, finally. So what happened to you? Because I know you're a heroin. I can tell right now you're a heroin addict. Um, so yeah, it's basically, they kind of have this pretty cool relationship. So that was pretty cool. And again, he's kind of a, I wouldn't say he's a completely bad guy yet. But he's not a, but he's for sure not a good guy. Um, he man, he, he's really manipulative. He knows he, he he knows how to work people. Let's go with that. So yeah, I mean overall it's a pretty good show at the end. Uh at the end they kind of end up in this guy and Strand's house. We find out that Liz, which is Travis's ex wife, got bit and you know, Travis and um, Travis goes from the good man, which is why the um, C episode six is called the good man, because he basically went through so much shit in the last episode. He had to beat up this one soldier. When he got, he, he went to him, this one soldier. Um, and so yeah, and then he has to shoot his wife before she turns. So yeah, and that's kind of how they find out, you know, that they're all infected. Now she tells Travis, I don't, I don't know if Madison was paying attention at that time, but yeah, and it's pretty interesting because you do have some people who accept the situation. And are willing to do whatever it takes to survive, such as Strand, Nick, Madison, and Daniel. And then you have some people who are trying to preserve their innocence in this apocalypse. Or they don't want; they kind of trust the government. So you know, which, which in that case would be Travis, Liz, which is, I mean, Travis, Liz, Alicia, Ophelia. You know, like those type of people. You know, you so you do have those two um, parts kind of going at it, you know, you have those people who trust the government and feel and think that everything's going to turn out all right, so it doesn't, and then you have, you know, the people who just don't trust the government to begin with, and know that everything's going to go to shit, and despite their trying and their efforts, it's not going to be worth a damn at the end, so yeah, it is connected to The Walking Dead, now, the one question many people ask, is it ever going to cross over with The Walking Dead, I don't think so, for, for several reasons, one, the timing, even if they do time skips, I don't know, I, I, it would feel a bit weird, Just and I'm going off the first season, so I don't know what the second season has in, in store for us, but just going off the first season, I think it'd be a bit clunky, um, also, how, you'd have to traverse all of the United States, at least part of it, so, yeah, going from LA to right around the Washington area, which is where they would be at by that point, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think it would make sense, um, it is a really good show, in my opinion. It's not as good as the. If I'm gonna compare this to the first season of The Walking Dead, it's. I don't. I think it's slightly less. I feel like season one of The Walking Dead is slightly better than this than this one than Fear the Walking Dead's first season. They they started off really good. Okay, I will say they did start off a little bit slow. 
but I, but I did like how they, with that slow start, they did start a little bit slow. I do think they could have kind of had that process of the zombie apocalypse kind of go a little bit faster, kind of, they kind of, because, because they kind of started by season, th uh, by episode three, and um, they kind of started this whole zombie stuff around episode three, um, you know, halfway through episode two, and it really developed through episode three, and I think they could have done that a little bit faster. But overall, it's a pretty good show. Definitely do check it out, especially if you like zombies and if you like The Walking Dead, whether it be the comics or the TV shows. You know, I do recommend you guys checking it out. Um, so, yeah. Um, it did, it's really successful. It's going to go on to have a season two. Um, and all I know about season two thus far is that, that parts of it are going to be shot in Mexico and that they have a mini series like a, like a Fear the Walking Dead webisode series where it's people on a plane, and basically it's like zombies on a plane, you know, like the movie Snakes on a Plane, well not zombies on a plane, plane crashes are going to have a, one of those characters survive, and and basically they're going to be introduced in season two, which will be interesting, but the webisodes haven't really impressed me that much, but mostly because of the way they're doing the webisodes, they're kind of putting out an episode of the webisodes every time an episode of the Walking Dead main series comes out, and those webisodes are like about a minute long. And if you compare it to the other webisodes, like the other webisodes are about five minutes long ish between fit and then the whole thing was between fifteen and half an hour long. This one I feel like it's gonna be about half an hour long. Fifteen again, fifteen to two, uh, to half an hour long. But the way they're doing it, I think they should have just kind of given it to us all in one, and that would have been better. Or maybe something like that. I don't know. Or maybe, or maybe they should have started all the way back in in season, in episode one with the pilot, and just kind of gone through it, and then we probably would have had our 16 episodes by now, 8 plus 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we would have had 14, two more, two left over, whatever, the kids just giving it to us, uh, fuck it, um, it's good acting, good writing, I do like the structure of it, which is the start of the zombie apocalypse, I really did like, do like that, because we don't see that much in any type of zombie medium, we really don't see that much, um, the start of a zombie apocalypse, you kind of and if we do, it's like really basic or really, yeah, it's just really basic or really generic. Um, you get like maybe a few scenes at the beginning and of whatever, of the TV show or the movie or whatever. And then it just kind of goes full blown into the zombie apocalypse. And so I do like how they kind of develop the zombie apocalypse. A bit slow, but you know, really good. All the characters for the most part were pretty good. I really, aside from uh, from Liz, which I'm happy she died. At the end of the season, as well, and I like, I, yeah, and despite the fact that I didn't really like the character, I liked how they handled her death because it does, it will form more inner turmoil between the group. So that's pretty good. Overall, it's a pretty good show. Definitely do check it out if you haven't already. Um, it's not as good as the first season of The Walking Dead. Um, slightly like this is first season of The Walking Dead. This is first season of Fear the Walking Dead. It's that, it's that far apart. And yeah, on a scale of one to ten. 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, and 6 being decent. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. I wanted to give it a 9, but there's just some things that I really... It's not that I can't forgive, but I do think the could have improved upon. Uh, and there's a lot of things. Like, sometimes the writing's not that good. The acting's sometimes not that good. Especially in the first 2 or 3 episodes, it's not really that good. Like, I feel like there's some a few times where the acting kind of falters. And yeah, but, and yeah, I mean, they were a bit slow, but overall, it's a pretty good episode. Definitely ch do check it out. I mean, the major complaint for the show is the lack of, lack of zombies. And yes, that, that is a major issue. I won't say it's a major issue, but it is kind of a negative for the show. Uh, because you, it's, they're kind of stuck in this cul-de-sac, surrounded by the military. So there isn't going to be that many zombies to begin with. I mean, the only times we see zombies is like in the riots in like the downtown Los Angeles. And then like the season finale, which is... This whole military base kind of swarmed in by zombies. And the way they kind of did it was kind of comedic because you kind of just have Daniel and he's kind of just walking down the street. Uh, walking down the street with my six feet. Um, he, is that who I want? Fuck it. Um, he's kind of just walking down the street with his flashlight. The military are like, want me to shoot you because, you know, bullshit. He's like, you know, save your am ammunition. He kind of just walks off and then you have this swarm of fucking zombies just kind of come, come around the corner and... That was pretty funny. That's probably one of the funniest things from this from this episode. Um, so yeah, but did anybody notice that when the group left um, Serrano's or whatever, the cul-de-sac that they were trapped in, the military cul-de-sac that they were trapped in, they left the gate open. We just released like half a do like half a thousand zombies. And I'm pretty sure many many of those people that died in the military base will also turn as zombies. 
won't you don't you think that eventually they'll reach this cul-de-sac and just ate the crap out of everybody who's left alive in that cul-de-sac is it just me or you know whatever um pretty good pretty good um so yeah overall pretty good on um, pretty good great first season and yeah 8.5 as i said before and yeah it's basically it for this review subscribe if you're not subscribed i do movie reviews tv show reviews and comic book reviews Comment down below on your thoughts on the episode, on the season. What are your thoughts on it? Comment all that down below. Let me know. Like the video, share on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. And that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart signing off.